Well, hello, hello, hello. Much love to you all. May God bless you all. Hit that like button. Share this stuff out. Got a couple sad stories here in the uh, headlines. Um, and time will tell what will happen with this. But this son beheads his own father on a YouTube live stream. The video, of course, has been taken down like it should be. But um, now what's going to emerge from this is are, are, are they going to relate this to religion? Are they going to relate this to any type of faith? Um, but either way, I think it was like what, 2015 or 16, a man was killed live on Facebook and Facebook took really huge actions and became more stricter. We already see a lot of censorship. So with the censorship that's been going on with YouTube, something like this should be censored, but nevertheless, uh, how much more stricter are they going to get? Uh, they already are really strict and this could have huge implications with any type of a Christian channel. Uh, time will tell. You know, when we look at the depravity of things like this that take place, we see that um, the love of Christ, of course, is not in this person. If the love of Christ was in someone, uh, they wouldn't go and kill anybody. Uh, your words can be murder alone, as the Bible tells us. So this guy was 32 years old, and he began this video by staring at the camera. Um, just, I guess, you know, staring at it very uh, sadistically. And then he held up a human head. Um, you know, there's two stories about parents that I have in today's headlines. And and I'll get to the gist of where I'm talking about with parents with this. Uh, this is heartbreaking because, you know, as a father myself of, of, of six children, one, one is deceased and five are still on this earth, that, um, you know, you, you, when your wife tells you she's pregnant and you get that exciting feeling and you go and hug her, you guys have a few tears. Uh, maybe it's your first, maybe it's your second child or so on and so on. And then you spend the nine months prepping. And then once the baby's here, you spend your whole lifetime. I mean, even up to when they're teenagers, we've had teenagers that are now grown and moved out. You know, you still check on their room. You still make sure like, Hey, is it clean? Is there things in here? You know, the life of a parent never ends even once they're out of the house you still give parental advice i mean the two we have left in the home get uh seven getting ready to be eight and then uh 10 getting ready to be 11 you know we still check their rooms daily we still tuck them in we still read them bedtime stories so you know you spend this whole whole life getting prepared and then this these these parents or for instance like the first story uh this parent for 32 years was a parent to this this son of his and then his son beheads him and then you get here you spend 14 years and then your daughter they lose custody because they refuse to let her transition well the whole story of this and i and this family's torn apart my heart is really grieved for this family i i can't imagine what um what is going through their minds what what is what 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 is the feeling in their heart with what's going on uh they get this call from you know friends at school that she wanted to commit suicide in August of 2023. So CPS child protection agency, they get involved, they interview the family and they determine that she needed a transition to be better. So CPS gives this guideline to the States and the state's going to listen to CPS and CPS says, you know, it'd be better if this girl had a transition. And of course, um, Jennifer's a stepmother and the girl's biological father, uh, are up in the upbringing of this. And it seems like, you know, the state went against them and said, Hey, we're going to go ahead and you're going to lose custody. We're going to allow your daughter to now get a sex change and how this must feel, you know? Um, so then we also get down to, it comes to a family in Indiana. That's where I live, Indiana, the U S Supreme court to reveal their lost custody case of Jeremy and Mary Cox, who are, evangelistic Christians. I remember hearing this story here in Indiana. They're, uh, they're, they're evangelists here in Indiana. They lost custody of their son in 2021 after refusing for religious reasons to let him identify as a girl. And, uh, now, you know, this is bringing up other cases that have happened. I really think it's wrong that parents are losing custody over this. Um, you know, for what's standing for what's right, you know, you got to stand for what's right. 
if your child's born a boy, they're a boy. If they're born a girl, they're a girl. And we've went through this many times. And of course, you know, even Hollywood movies nowadays are changing uh, the wordplay they're using on things so they don't offend people. But guys, we're seeing these things continue to become a huge issue here in America. And these are two sad stories that are on the headlines. And then you got, of course, yesterday we had the huge story that Elon Musk had been successful in inserting the brain chip into the first human. And now his plans are to advance transhumanism. He wants to really, um, there was a Q&A session that was asked uh, of him back in 2021. And he said, you could probably save state in the brain. So if you were to die, your state could be returned in the form of another human body or a robot. So now we're getting into the gist of we want to take the human brain, the human memories and thoughts, and we want to insert it into someone else. I mean, we've already seen stories of people that have had eye transplants from people that are dead. They have the eyes of another person, and sometimes they see things that that person uh, had seen before, and that's because the eyes kind of have a memory to them. They connect straight to the brain. So now it's like uh, he's saying this, you know, now it's like you could be in a saved game situation. You could save the game like, oh, well, you died, but now we saved the game. We can transplant it to somewhere else. But saying that a few memories could be lost, mostly memories about you. But now we're getting into where Hollywood movies have had movies where we transplant a person's memory, thoughts, and brains to something else or to a CPU or an AI or a robot. And it's now becoming reality that this is something they are literally doing. They're playing God is literally what they're doing. They're playing God, which is an abomination. So I've had many videos. I can have them pop up at the end of this where I talked about the beginning and the end about the eclipse and then about the emergence of the cicadas during this eclipse. So I don't think this is a coincidence that it's starting uh, for the United States going through Texas. Uh, we see what's going on in Texas right now, and then it's passing through, and then it gets to Little Egypt, uh, a place that's nicknamed Little Egypt in Illinois, and it's passing through, of course, Indiana. Of course, Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan are going to be the top two states that have the biggest emergence of cicadas after this eclipse. So uh, there's really a lot of signs going on in today's world that we really need to pay attention and get closer to God. Um also, that being said, usually we do Wednesday's Bible study on Wednesday. We're doing it on Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So tomorrow, join us for the book of Mark as we get into fellowship, because the word of God is the most important thing. We see signs like this happening. The Lord told us wickedness would abound. Uh, there, there's so much going on, guys. There's so much going on. And really, as we reflect back on the first 31 days of this year, it has been a very eventful year. Very eventful. So, you know, it's passing through a place called Eagle Pass, Texas. Of course, the eagle is mentioned in the Bible a few times. You see uh, references to eagle in the Bible. So, guys, this is just, uh, like, like I've said many times, these signs going on, it's just, it's phenomenal. So I'm only going to read the 5.0s or higher. Three hours and 56 minutes ago, Tonga had a 5.8. Remember, they got a pretty huge volcano there that's went off a few times, and it's literally, when, last time it did, it caused some atmospheric, um, uh, uh, it, it caused a lot of issues. It was, like a, it was like an atomic bomb going off. So that's a pretty significant earthquake over there by Tonga. As you can tell, lots of fours, but we had a 5.1 in Samoa as well. And then we scroll down a little further, we had a 5.0 in Indonesia. So we're seeing a lot of these things happening. And um, time of tell how strict YouTube is going to get even stricter than they've already became. Something like this should be blocked, though. Uh, it, it definitely should. We should not be allowing things like this. But I'm only going in the sense that what are they going to censor? Are they really going to censor something like this, or are they going to censor the Christianity even more? Um, time will tell on this because they're already censoring us so bad. I mean, I've seen some Christian... Uh, websites, they got, you know, like 200,000 subs and they get like, you know, 2,000 views. That tells you there is a massive censorship that is going on. And if the Lord gives you a message to say, I mean, he's given you a message to say, 
by all means, it should not be suppressed by an AI algorithm, but it is. And it's all based on the words, the AI algorithms listening to what I'm saying. Now they'll, uh, you know, say, hey, we really can't let these types of things go. But I see people on X, which is Twitter, um, trying to justify what this kid did. Uh, there's nothing to justify about this. Murder is murder. It's it's not it's not of God, and the love of God, the love of Jesus, is not in your heart. If you do something like this, can a person be forgiven for murder? Of course they can. I mean, you go all the way back to Moses and murdered. You 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 go all the way back to you know many people through the history of time that have been on death row and have repented to the Lord God. So, you know, we can only hope that somebody like this does repent, but what was the motive behind it? I'm, I'm going to say the motive behind it, number one, is the love of Christ was not in their heart, because if the love of Christ was in somebody's heart, you would not commit things like this. So, nevertheless, pray for this family. Um, it's really sad how many families in the past few years are starting to... Uh, it. How many more families? Uh, and then before it starts becoming like really major that a lot of families start losing uh, kids over this for standing what's right and pray that when this does happen, these families don't fall back on their faith and they hold to the truth. They continue to say, look, Lord, you are a you are an amazing God. I don't know why this had happened, but just I hope they keep their faith. I hope they keep their faith through this. Because standing for what's right nowadays, we, when we look at Isaiah 5.20, you got a world, you know, I'm paraphrasing Isaiah 5.20, but you got a world that is basically saying what is wrong is right and what is right is wrong. And what is sweet is bitter and what is bitter is sweet. So we're living in a world like that right now. So much love to you all. May God bless you all. Keep us in prayers. We're getting ready to go out here to witness in the streets today. And then next Saturday, we will be leaving to New Orleans Mardi Gras to witness out there. So uh, keep us in prayers as we're getting ready for one of the biggest uh, trips we've ever done in this ministry. We've been to Skid Row. We've been to, uh, you know, Red Light uh, Cincinnati District. We've been to Chicago. We've been to Minneapolis. We've been to witch gatherings in Boston at Satan Con, uh, Satanic Planet here in Indiana. Roe v. Wade overturns. We've been to a lot of things, but there's something really different about this trip in particular we're taking. So I also want to mention this, that if anybody next week wants to join me and my wife, we are fasting Wednesday and Thursday. Next week, we're fasting for two days. Um, water and peanuts is all I'm eating uh, and drinking, just water and peanuts, and I'm not going to be eating that much uh, of that. It's just occasional have that, but I'm going to be fasting to get ready and prepped for this mission trip that is uh, ahead. And then, of course, Friday, I'll be eating a, a meal before we hit the road because I want to make sure that I am completely strengthened. So after you eat after a fast, you get strengthened so much. So if anybody wants to join us on that fast, uh, join us in spirit with praying or join us also with your flesh you know, denying your flesh and fasting with us. So pray, pray to God about it before you do. I don't want anybody to fast uh, without God's will. So, but it, it, but if he makes you feel like, yeah, I, I should fast with them, then join us for that. Because, you know, sometimes we do want to offer that out. Join us in a fast. Later on this year, I'd like to do a longer one. And I'll, I'll give an announcement with that with people. If they want to join in with that, I'd like to do a longer fast sometime later this year. So much love. Hit the like button and may God bless you.